Israel's Ben Seraf, who will be playing with uh, Ulm next year uh, in Germany. This is another guy who <laughs> there's a lot to like for a lot of similar reasons and will also kind of come down to maybe the shot. Uh, he played in the Israeli league last year. Uh, at Basketball Without Borders, he measured at 6'5", 6'7 inch wingspan, 202 pounds. Again, take these measurements with a grain of salt. Um, but you, he could, he's clearly a plus size, like initiator. Um, cause that's, you know what he is. He was the breakout star, I think of yeah. the under 18s, you know, as a guy who maybe wasn't so much in the draft conversation at this point of the cycle, which again, we are so early. If you're listening to this, you are a draft sicko. We appreciate you for rocking with us. We got a bunch of people watching this on YouTube. Uh, make sure you smash that like button. We got a bunch of people that are going to be listening to this on their podcast feeds. People are watching on Twitter. You guys love, you know, the the nitty gritty of scouting. So this is the breakout guy of that tournament. Um, so I can tell sometimes when you get interested in a player because you'll start posting about them <laughs> <laughs> online. <laughs> I do. I do, Corey. Um, I actually got interviewed by an uh, by an Israeli publication uh, about Ben Seraf. Um, they <laughs> they saw my tweet about his passing, and they're like, "Hey, man, you want to talk about Ben Seraf?" And I was like, "Let's do it." Um, <laughs> so, yeah, at Corey, with him, I just think he's a lot of fun. Is the best way to put it right now. I, he, as you mentioned, was a breakout star of the U eighteen tournament. He who 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 had himself a very, very productive tournament. Uh, he showed a ton of ability to do all kinds of things. Um, I, I think the biggest thing with him is he's just a lot of fun. Like, if you give him the ball, he's going to have a lot of fun is what it is, right? I thought he was really shifty, the ball in his hands. Well, you know, let me let, me let, let you get into it more, but just a lot of fun and a guy that, who is going to be really interesting to watch at Ulm this year because he's playing with, um, God, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but Noah. Yeah. Uh, S -N -N yeah, I'm not going to try right now. I don't know. But they can be a really fun tandem for that mm -hmm. Ulm team after they just lost Juan Nunez and um, uh, Pacom Dadier. Uh, they can come in, be the new two young guns, and be a really fun pairing uh, for Ulm this season. So really interesting to see how that goes. But yeah, overall with Ben, just uh, we'll get into the nitty gritty right now, but a lot of fun. Is there an argument that he's the best playmaker in this class right now? <laughs> I, play, I freaking knew you were going to do this because <laughs> I'm right there with you, guy. He he had some dude. There were some passes where I was like, oh, like this is like this is why we watch basketball. Some of this shit, like it was fantastic. Feel, timing, touch, precision. I mean, hey, if you're a low man on defense and Ben Serif has the ball and you're caught in no man's land or you're late or you're just in the wrong spot, he will punish you. Yeah. Is what Ben Serif likes to do. So, yes, Corey, it is very possible that he might be the best playmaker in this class. Yeah. Like he had 37 assists, 17 turnovers in the tournament um you mentioned like his ability to manipulate guys but it wasn't just like oh hey like this is you know the only competition where he was you know showing these skills like if you go back and and watch stuff last year you know he also did a really really good job of making plays and making smart decisions um with the ball in his hands uh, 117 assists to 61 turnovers. Um, so, like, this is a guy who is, is a very, very, very high-level playmaker. He has the height. He has the vision. He has the strength. Um, you know, he has the rim pressure and the athleticism to consistently collapse the defense uh, and create open perimeter shots. He's really good spraying the ball um, to the right corner when he drives left. He, you know, he's got, uh, he uses his height in combination with, the jump pass to fire like laser skips. Uh, he's crafty. He beats the defense into thinking that he's trying to score and then he'll make the play. Like it's not just like an out of control thing. Like obviously it not to compare him to Tyler, Ty Tyrese Halliburton, but Halliburton does a very similar thing where he has a plan when he leaves his feet. A lot of times uh, his height allows him to handle hard hedges. 
he has like the low turnovers, but he's not afraid to thread a needle and, you know, throw some high risk passes. He's got like, he does the live dribble hits with one hand. Like he's, it maybe doesn't look as crazy or as like cool. Cause maybe he's not like, as like flexible. I don't know, maybe it's the word as like, you know, a guy like Yakachunas, but like he might be more effective or, you know, a, as a passer, I think he is more uh, effective right now um, to be honest than, and you know, I, he's, he might be even a better passer than, you know, Traore. Like, it, you know, like, I don't know. He's very good. He's he's a very good playmaker. Yes, Corey. I mean, the, the post that I did on him, it was just all his passing. And there was one, I forgot what team he was playing against. But it it's what you said before, right? Like, it really looked like he was going up for a layup. And two guys, his man, I think they were in a ball screen. He got to the rim. His man was behind him. And the big came over. So the big was trying to contest. And his man was trying to contest. So he had two on him. And he just lost this, like, perfect little over-the-top touch pass to his big for a wide-open layup. And I was like, that that was I, – I yelled. I was like, what the f- – <laughs> I really thought he was going up for the layup. He absolutely fooled me. And he's that type of guy, like you said, Corey. He really can fool the defense. My biggest thing – and I mentioned it before, like he, the way that he can manipulate the floor – um, with his ability, he's another guy that can live in the mid range too. He's got a good mid range jumper. He likes going to it. Um, he can go all the way to the rim. He's got crafty finishes at the rim as well. My biggest thing with him is I love the pace that he plays with. It never felt like he was sped up or trying to do too much. Um, I, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved his game. I loved watching it. Um, we'll get to the defense later. I thought his defense was kind of fun too. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I just, there's a slipperiness to him um, mm-hmm. that I really liked. It, it, it feels like it, it's hard to stay in front of him. Um, I love how he navigates ball screens. Another guy who can split doubles really nicely. Yep. Um, I, God, a lot of fun. Like, I just cannot wait to see what this looks like, you know, for, for all in the season. Because, Corey, if this goes well, dude, I, they, when, when I was interviewed for that piece, they were like, how high do you think he can go? And I was like, I guess he can go lottery, dude. Definitely. Why not? He can easily go lottery. Uh, Cause the guy, like when he was talking to me, he was like, Oh, you know, you think he'll go like early second or late first. I'm like, dude, from what I've seen. And if this, if he keeps this up at home, he, he can go lottery. No problem. I, I even said he can go top 10. So uh, yeah, we, I, I think Corey, we like this guy a lot. Yeah. So, okay. Let's talk about the path to how he gets a top 10. Okay. He has to shoot it. Now, I think he's a really good finisher, right? So, like, that's something that he has going for him. It definitely helps with his playmaking because you actually believe that he's going to go and finish at the rim. Super herky-jerky. He's shifty. He gets super low to the ground on crossovers. Mm -hmm. He's got quick burst, crazy first step. Um, he is very left-hand dominant. Uh, I will say that, um, he's got good deceleration. Like he's going to be, again, like if you want to play him off the ball, he's going to be great coming out of zooms. Um, I don't love his touch as a finisher necessarily. If he's better in transition, uh, I think he'll learn to use his size to his advantage more, but like, this is all awesome. The shot has to go in now at FIBA. He was 39% in catch and shoot. Um, 25% guarded, 63.6% unguarded there. Right now, now the good news is he is not afraid to shoot shots. Mm. And he was clearly like the number one option. He's taking tough shots off the bounce. Um, So that's good. But he's much more of a shot maker than a shooter. Mm. True. The problem is, too, I, I think historically with him is the shot making in general. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Uh, I think the, even though I'd say he's a shot maker, it's like, that's what he showed in the FIBA tournament. I don't know if that's what he showed throughout his, his career so far. Now that's the last, you know, footage we have of him. It's the most recent. So like, you love to see that trending in the right direction. Right. Um, but he's been pretty inefficient, um, you know, at other levels. He was, you know, let's see, at the Israeli team shot 25%. Um, from three 
So, you know, there's definitely a lot that he needs to complete to continue to work on. Uh, I think that it's very upper body reliant. It's a little stiff. It's pretty mechanical. Sometimes you could see it kind of like step one, step two. Um, sometimes it feels like pommy because he, he gets, mm. it's got a high release point. He's got good arc, but I think like guys who shoot the ball with a lot of palm, like sometimes it leads to like harder misses and inconsistent misses. Um, and I think that's part of it. There's a lot of times where like he'll jab step himself open and then shoot the threes. And it's kind of mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I don't know if I'd say like a bailout shot, but it's like, cause he's still like creating space. It's fine, but it's like probably not the best shot that you can get. So maybe it's a little bit selling. Um, I, I like him as a shooter. Mm-hmm. He pulls up at the elbow, right? Like I like when he gets to those elbows again, yes. it helps make plays. Um, you know, it helps pull the drop bigs up. It does a lot of, a lot of stuff. And, you know, he showed that not only can he be the lead playmaker, but uh, he could play next to guys because, you know, he was playing next to uh, Omer Mayer, who I thought had some moments in that tournament too, and was really interesting. Um, but, you know, so he can play on or off the ball, which is definitely good. But like, you know, him being a shooter is, is going to be the thing that gets him into that lottery, that top 10 conversation. If he's just like an adequate shooter, you know, like, then that conversation gets very real very quickly. If he continues to shoot 25% next year, then we need to do a little bit more projection of what does this look like when he gets to a team and he doesn't have the ball in his hands all the time. He needs to shoot it for a team to go, all right, I think I can give this guy the ball in heavy usage and heavy volume and make the juice worth the squeeze. I think what we need to hope for is that he goes to Ohm, plays with Noah. Noah takes, you know, a lot of the attention of the defense, uh, opens up some opportunities for Ben to take some wide open catch and shoot threes. And then he hits a good amount of them. I think if that happens and then also Ben, you know, tightens things up a little bit, hits a couple threes, you know, off the dribble. And when I say a couple, I'm talking about like a decent amount. Um, I think that'll be enough Corey to kind of turn the tide, you know, with the overall concept um, perception of his jumper. So that's what we have to hope for. I, I, that's what I'm really hoping for because Corey, you're right. If, if he, Oh man, like, okay. For FIBA, he shot like what? 36% from three overall. Right. Um, I think it was like 36.2. Mm-hmm. If he can to do that this yeah. year for Alm, it's over. I, I think it's uh, there. I, I think teams will just be so in love with the size and the playmaking with him that if he gets to that percentage, it'll be more than enough and he's a lock. But, you know, obviously, Corey, like you said, if he's like mid 20s and ah, damn, like teams will be like, oh, are we sure this kid could shoot type of discussion? And, you know, obviously momentum will shift. But man, if he can be mid 30s, we will be very, very happy people. And I think he will end up in a really uh, good situation when it comes to the draft. So I, I couldn't agree with you more, but I, uh, yeah, the free throw shooting too, right? Yeah, I was so, going to say, if he just, yeah. if he hits free throws at a better percentage. <laughs> yes, yes. Now he shot, I think 76% in FIBA, which yes. is pretty good. Yes. Like I'll, I'll buy that. Um, I'll take that. I'm not like excited about it, but I'll take that. <laughs> Last year, um, in the Israeli league, he shot 66.3% on free throws. So you couple that with his 24.8% on threes. He was only 44.8% on two point shots. His efficiency was pretty rough in the Israeli league. But if you like watch some of the footage, it, he looks like the same guy. So like he, he was still getting to his spots. He was still making plays. Right. Um, so it's gonna come down to his efficiency. Yeah. things look easy for him mm-hmm. you know like i don't feel like he looks like he's tr- struggling to make things happen and i think that's a really really good sign i'll tell you what the draft twitter kids mm-hmm. who like freak out about shin angles are gonna love this guy <laughs> shin flexion his shin flexion <laughs> Woo! yeah yeah. yeah, you're gonna. There's gonna be some cold showers on draft Twitter with, uh, <laughs> with the shin angles of this guy. But you mentioned uh, too the defense with him, right? Yeah. He averaged five stocks a game at the U18s. Yeah, dude. that's pretty impressive for any level, you know. Like this is a this is a guard, you know. This is a guy who's playing like 
point guard or off court, off guard. So four steals, one block, um, very active hands. Obviously I think he really can move his feet and slide. He's strong. He's got good length. Like I believe his length, like he looks yes. like he's got really long arms. Um, and I think he leverages that length to play the passing lanes and poke balls away. If you're sloppy and you're loose with it, um, off the ball, I thought he ball watched a little bit. And sometimes yeah. like, I think he loses his man quite often, uh, but he can cover ground on closeouts um, and get to the corner as the low man. He reads passing lanes. Well, again, and that's why he's able to generate so many turnovers. So I think on that end, like he's going to do more good than bad. And you can teach mm -hmm. him to kind of hone in some of his weaknesses. Like this is a guy who I think has a potential to be a plus on that end because of uh, his physical tools. So I, he, there is a lot, a lot, a lot to like with Ben Seraph. That dude looked like a freaking stud in the U 18. So like, yeah, obviously we have to take in more sample into consideration, but going into this year, like I think he's got a good a chance as anybody to explode into this top part of, of, you know, the draft conversation. Yeah. Last thing I'll say about him, Corey, um, defensively uh, in back-to-back -back games against Slovenia and Serbia, seven steals, eight steals, had a yeah. block in each game. Just the playmaking on that side is awesome. Quick hands. Yeah. I, I, I'm, and, and I'm look, some guys gamble and they get two steals, you know, like there's instincts there that are on, you know, I think like really unteachable when okay. you can generate, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, those, that many turnovers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, <laughs> the lowest amount of steals he had in the game was two. So um, really good by him. Good base. Um, but overall, good baseline. <laughs> and Corey, like you said, right? Like, yes, there are things he needs to work on. Yes, he can get caught ball watching a little bit, but we also have to remember he had heavy usage on the offensive side of the ball. He's also young. So we'll, we'll see. I, I think overall, like you said, Corey, the, the ceiling for him is still high. Um, even on defense, I, I think he'll be a really, I, I think he's going to be a good defender is where I'm ending up right now. So yeah, right there with you. Yeah. Um, he's, he was probably my favorite guy out of the three to watch. Hmm. Um, still kind of figuring out, you know, my rankings and, and whatnot for this part of the year, but he's, he's as interesting as any of the guys I think that I've watched.